It is now nine o'clock, and I would ask that you please rise and join me in the invocation to be given by Mr. Don Ash, our MA 911 director, and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Let us pray. Eternal Father God, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity, God, another rising of the sun. Lord, we ask you to be in the midst of this meeting, God. Lord, we ask you to be with our elected officials just throughout this county, God, our state and our nation, God. Lord, we thank you for their service and their dedication to the people of this county. God, in everything we do, God, we give you praises and honor in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting of the Board of Commissioners is now hereby called to order. I do want to make a note um, from Stacy Rudisell regarding a change to the agenda, if you, or an announcement that should be made for some of our citizens that are here today. So if you could proceed with that. Chair, originally Planning and Zoning had scheduled an appeal of Leslie Morrison at 648 Ward Road to be heard this morning. It was subsequently rescheduled to be heard on September the 19th at 630. And so this appeal will not be heard this morning. Okay, thank you for that announcement. The other item regarding the agenda is that um, item um, 14B regarding the ERP contract with Title Solutions will be removed from the agenda. So based on that announcement and based on the item that's going to be removed, item 14B, I now open the floor for an acceptance of the agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Second. Have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? We now will move into um, our proclamations. Um, we have two proclamations this morning that will be presented to, uh, in regards to Mr. T.C. Carter and also J.J. Quinlan. And we ask Ms. Melissa Robinson to, to present those. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. This morning we have two proclamations regarding the Camp Creek train wreck. And the first one is a proclamation recognizing T.C. Carter for his bravery during the Camp Creek train wreck. Whereas on the night of June 23, 1900, while the sleeper car of Southern Engine No. 7 lay in the rushing waters of Camp Creek, not far from the blazing inferno that was once the forward cars, and whereas T.C. Carter, an African-American Pullman porter, injured in the horrific No. 7 crash, challenged by his own need for safety and desire to live, heard the cries of surviving passengers within the wreckage. And whereas despite his painful hip and other injuries, T.C. Carter's concern for the safety and well-being of others transcended his own need. And whereas in memory and recognition of this heroic act, it, it, whereas T.C. Carter's bravery showed only, not only the men and women of, of his day, but also us today, the heroism that knows no race, gender, religion, orientation, nationality, or creed. And whereas, in memory of recognition of this heroic act and the sense of community, community which emerged from the Camp Creek tragedy, the Henry County Sheriff's Department, Police Department, Fire Department, and the Department of Emergency Management, in conjunction with public safety from the City of McDonough, participated in the T.C. Carter Center Safety Day, an event sponsored by Councilwoman Sondra Vincent of McDonough, the McDonough Main Street Program, Commissioner Gary Barham, and volunteers Barbara and Joe Frazier, and John and Holly Quinn. And whereas the memory of T.C. Carter is memorialized in the writings of Georgia historian and professor Jeffrey C. Wells' book, In Atlanta or in Hell. And whereas the spirit and sense of community which emerged from the historic Camp Creek train wreck is permanently engrafted in the fiber of Henry County. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Henry County Board of Commissioners that T.C. Carter be remembered and honored as a true Henry County hero for his bravery and compassion in saving the lives of others during the Camp Creek train wreck this first day of August 2017. And I have another proclamation that's related to this one. And this proclamation is in recognition of J.J. Quinlan for his bravery during the Camp Creek train wreck. Whereas on the night of June 23, 1900, the train of Southern Engine No. 7 caught fire near McDonough after crashing into the stormy waters of Camp Creek. Departing from Macon and traveling north to Atlanta, 
Engine number seven began crossing over the Camp Creek trestle, but it had been compromised due to a severe rainstorm. And whereas the devastating wreck resulted in 39 souls lost with just seven survivors. And among the seven survivors, passenger J.J. Quinlan, flagman, struggled to climb a 50-foot muddy embankment to seek help. And after finally seek, reaching the top, Quinlan ran two miles to the McDonough train station to warn and stop an oncoming freight train from disaster, likely saving hundreds of lives. And whereas despite his injuries, Quinlan's concern was for the safety of those who to yet to yet to reach McDonough, and whereas the spirit of J.J. Quinlan's bravery in the face of terror should continue to live throughout our communities in Henry County, and his heroic acts to save the lives of others while dealing with his own personal injuries should be an example to all. And whereas the memory of J.J. Quinlan has been memorialized in the annual Quinlan's 5K Run, an initiative started by McDonough Councilwoman Sandra Vincent, Barbara Fraser, Jeff Wells, Caprice Walker, and John Quinn. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Henry County Board of Commissioners that J.J. Quinlan be remembered and honored as a true Henry County hero for his bravery and compassion in saving the lives of others during the Camp Creek train wreck. This first day of August 2017, signed by Chair June Wood, attested by County Clerk Stephanie Braun. And we have several people to come and accept these proclamations. All right, well, thank you. And we're glad to see um, Mayor Copeland, Sandra, uh, Councilwoman Sandra Vincent, uh, members of the NAACP, Mr. Edwards and Mrs. Edwards. Mr. John and Holly Quinlan and other representatives from McDonough. So we thank you for joining in for this proclamation today. Thank you. Okay, well, would you please join us for a picture, please? Well, thank you very much. We will now move into um, item six um, regarding a finance award recognition from um, our county manager, Sherry Hobson Matthews. Good morning, Chair and Board members. Good morning. It is with pleasure that I stand here this morning to recognize our own finance department. Um, there are two financial reports that are submitted by local governments um, every year. And I was pleased to know that our finance department is being recognized for the reports that they have submitted. And so I want to go over what both reports are, and then I'm going to introduce our staff members, and hopefully we can get a photo op with our board. Henry County received a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting from the Government Finance Officers Association, which is GFOA, of the United States and Canada GFOA, for fiscal years between 2005 and 2016. 
This award is given to governments whose comprehensive annual financial report, which is also known as the CAFR, achieves the highest standards in government accounting and financial reporting. For the past 12 consecutive years, including the most recent audit in 2016, the county has received the Certificate of Achievement for its CAFR. Henry County is one of only 38 Georgia counties and 112 other government entities in Georgia to receive a Certificate of Achievement for 2015. The 2016 results have not yet been posted by GFOA. In GFOA's news release, they state, the Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. We also are recognizing our staff for our popular annual financial report. Henry County again received an annual award for outstanding achievement in popular annual financial reporting from the GFOA and Canada's GFOA for fiscal years ending 2006 through 2016. Again, this award is given to governments whose popular annual financial report, which is also referred to as the PAFR, conforms to program standards of creativity, presentation, understandability, and reader appeal. PAFRs are specifically designed to make the financial information they contain more readily accessible and understandable to a broader audience than that served by traditional financial reports. The county's PAFR has received the PAFR Award for Outstanding Achievement 11 consecutive years, including the most recent audit in 2016, and is one of only two counties out of Georgia's 159 counties and 12 other government entities in Georgia to achieve an award for Outstanding Achievement for 2015. CAFRs from fiscal years 2003 and 4 and PAFRs from fiscal years 2005 through, 6, 2005 through 2006 through 2015-2016 can be found on our Finance Department webpage. Again, this is an honor that we are standing here this morning rep re recognizing our Finance Department for a job well done. I will tell you it takes the entire team um, to pull this report together. So this morning we have all of the members of our Finance Department who are here and I would like for them to come up once I call their name. We have the Finance Director who is Fred Aletta who's been with the county for six and a half years. We have Ricky Morin, who is our Accounts Payable Administrator, who's been with the county for 10 years and seven months. We have Gina Vance, who's been with the county for nine years and just recently celebrated her nine-year anniversary about a week ago. Gina makes sure that everyone gets paid, so Gina's very important around here as well. We have Sloan Jinks, who's been with the county for eight years and one month, and Sloan is our accounting tech. We have Dustin Farron, who's been with the county for six years, 10 months, and he is an accountant too. He handles our cash management, our inbound and outbound wires, our fixed assets, and our monthly reports. We also have Mallory Wimpy, who recently transferred over to the purchasing department, so I'm not sure if she's here with us this morning, but she played a part in developing the report as well, and she's been with the county for 10 years. In her role in the finance department, she was a junior accountant. We have Danielle Gunn, who's kind of been back and forth. She was in our finance department and then handled some of our grants under our CDBG and NSP program. She's an accountant one. She's been with the county for three years and two months. She again helps with our fixed assets, construction in progress, our accounts receivable billing, our airport fuel and receivables, and then our backup cash receipts and banking. We have Erica Webb, who is new to the team, who's only been with the county for seven months. She's an accountant one, and she handles all of our SPLOS accounting and record keeping. We have Joy Robinson, who is also a newbie to the county. She's been with us for two months, and she is a grant accountant, and her main daily functions include all financial records for all of our county grants. And then we have our assistant finance director, who is Lori Lynn Robinson, who's been with the county for four years, one month. And Lori Lynn's daily functions include just about everything, but mostly annual audit preparation, our monthly quarterly and annual reporting, and Fred said it best, she basically does it all. So again, I want to personally thank this staff for a job well done. Um, it's very important to have a huge financial team, but to also have a good team that's being out there and doing the job that needs to get done because it is a tough job. So thank you for your service. Um, I do have two certificates that I will provide to the chair, but of course all of them are for the Government Financial Office Associations. Again, Award for Outstanding Achievement in Popular Annual Financial Reporting. And then I have the 2016 CAFR, which says the same, Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. So again, thank you all for a job well done. Congratulations, and thank you for a great representation. If we could join for a picture, please.
Thank you again to our finance team. We will now move into item um, seven regarding a um, library presentation by Ms. Carolyn Fuller, the director of our library system here in Henry County. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners, staff, morning. and audience. Uh, first, I'd like to express my appreciation for uh, the amended budget last year. Um, and the report I'm giving you today will tell you some of the things that we did with that money. Uh, but it, in, it allowed us to increase uh, the number of staff that we have to be open more hours. And this change is evident in the statistics for this year. Each of you will, were given a packet and I will refer to some of the items in the packet, but that packet is yours just to see some of the things we've done during the year. Um, our summer reading program uh, entitled Build a Better World ended last Friday and it's been exciting and rewarding. In June, our attendance uh, at programs and events was up 10% over last year and the attendance for 2017 is up over 22%. Uh, and I think this can be attributed to two elements, the increased hours, which allows more time for programs and also more staff to develop and present these programs. Uh, I think that the July uh, attendance will be up uh, over last year's as well. Uh, in your folder, I've given you a copy of the Library Times. This is our 17th edition, and this uh, highlights all the programs that happened for uh, children, teens and adults in all five branches for June and July. Um, these learning experience range from uh, history, science, music, technology, storytelling, animal adventure, and many more things. All of these have a literacy education component to them. Uh, this year we implemented a new teen program. It's hard to get teens in a library to, or anywhere during the summer. Um, so we in implemented a new system where every time they came in to check out material, they received a ticket. And these tickets were scratch off and there were some small prizes during the summer for these scratch off tickets. And last night we had a drawing for an iPad for one for each of the branches. And these were donated by the friends of the library. Um, and if you go to the library Facebook, you can see the drawing. I think, um, I think people were really excited about it. Um, some of the past things that we did this year in March, we had a teen tech week at all the branches. And there's a flyer in there that gave you, that will tell you some of the items that, um, and programs that we did, virtual reality, snap, uh, 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 what's the word? snap circuits. Uh, robots, all sorts of things. And we also participated in several STEAM uh, initiatives in the county, such as the STEAM's Southeast ATL Consortium. Um, some upcoming events, I'm sure all of you know that on August 21st, we'll have an eclipse. And uh, to celebrate that happening and to get ready for it, uh, on Saturday the 12th, we will have an indoor planetarium at the Cochrane Library in Stockbridge, and it'll run from 9 to 5, and there will be science and technology and space programs uh, running every 30 minutes. It's free to the people. Everybody who comes to that will get um, uh, solar watching glasses, and um, um, these uh, solar glasses are uh, certified safe for viewing the eclipse, and we'll have a couple of eclipse viewing parties on the 21st uh, at uh, Fortson and Fairview Libraries. Uh, all the branches will be giving out solar glasses this whole month uh, because we are concerned that people get to see the eclipse but get to see it safely. Another partnership that we have, we have several partnerships, but one that is uh, pretty exciting um, we are trying to get digital cards into the hands of all the students in Henry County so that they can um, access uh, all of our digital um, uh, programs, uh, that are, I'm sorry, databases. You've got a sheet of all the databases, homework helper, uh, foreign language, uh, just almost any subject that they'd want to do. Um, <coughs> We're one of three systems in the state of Georgia trying to do this initiative. And um, 
we, we've uh, worked with the school system and they put a, f a flyer in um, the parent packet and we'll soon see what kind of trouble we're in and getting all those uh, student names and addresses in and the cards to them. Another partnership is we partner with Gordon State. They have a satellite campus here, but they don't have a library. So the library director and I team teach some of the college classes in the use of our bibliographic and e online resources. Uh, and uh, many of them come to the McDonough Library for their schoolwork. Um, last February, the library system hosted the uh, first annual Teen share a at the Locust Grove Library. We had 17 different library systems that attended and even one from Tennessee. Uh, many of the staff presented programs during that time and um, it was very well received and hopefully we'll be able to do that for the next year. Uh, also in the past year, uh, the library system has served as an alpha, beta, and full production site for the uh, acquisition module for the statewide system of pines. Um, this book module will be used to order materials and track funds and it is now in general release across the state. We also tested an app for uh, Android phones for you to be able to access pines, uh, the library catalog, and to check out books and renew books um, and that is now in general release. Um, we've also published a couple of, of news art, uh, newspapers called the Library Connection. These were distributed through the Henry County Times and it highlights uh, library resources and programs and we'll probably do um, two to three of those a year. Um, we're also planning, um, just finishing last week, we're also now planning for the fall. We have a fall festival in McDonough in October and Curious George will be uh, in uh, Hampton on uh, sometime this month and that's sponsored by the Friends of the Library. Um, in October, five of our staff members will be presenting uh, programs at uh, Georgia Library Association Conference. This is a statewide conference and it's for academic and public libraries all over the state. And we're very proud of, of uh, those, those uh, folks that are presenting. Um, this is probably about the eighth or ninth year that staff has presented at this statewide conference. Uh, the library also participated in the McDonough Parent Expo and the Stockbridge Parent Expo. And some statistics. A lot of people are not excited by statistics, but I get excited by statistics, especially this year with, with the, everything that has happened and, and the increased use. We had 60,472 instances of people bringing their laptops into the library uh, doing their work. Um, and if you drive by one of the libraries and we're not open and you see cars parked there, we have, library, we have Wi Fi extenders so people can come and sit outside the library and use the Wi Fi. We've had 44,337 hours of public computer use. 60, 65,000 people signed up, and, and that's the 65,000 people used the 44,000 hours of uh, public computers. Um, our circulation, we checked out 363,000 print materials, 14,000 downloads of ebooks, 20,000 of downloads of audiobooks. 2,600 downloads of, of journal and magazine articles for a total of over 400,000 checkouts um, and 137,987 uh, hits on our website. And the last thing is we have been working this summer on a strategic plan that will take the library from the next three to five years. Uh, We've been busy last year. I think we've used the money that you amended the budget for. I think we've used it wisely and well. Uh, and I think the statistics and the participation um, uh, show that, that uh, people still love their public library and still use their public library. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Are there any questions from the board or comments from the board? Okay, Commissioner Clemens. Say thank you to the library and the library staff. I know over the last decade, the libraries have 
struggled and taken a big impact with the interruption of the digital age. Uh, being an advocate reader, I really appreciate what you guys have done. Um, you know, and thank you for providing the current um, performance data for us. That helps uh, when we're fighting to say library needs to be funded. Um, the programs, the lectures, the meetings, the storytelling, all those things that have went on over the summer, I've kept up with those things and very proud and glad to see what you guys are doing. And this Library Times, I love it. If this could go in every child's hand at the end of the school year or during the school, this would be wonderful as well. I just want to thank you and commend the library for your good work. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you Ms. Fuller. We appreciate you coming out today. All right, well, we're now moving to item eight regarding the SPLOS quarterly update, and we invite Mr. Rocky Romero and Mr. Ron Barkhalter to come forward for the presentation. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning. As we go through our presentation this morning, we're going to hit on the highlights of each one of the projects. There'll be more information on each project than what we're going to read. Um, this presentation will be posted on the county website. If you go to the SPLOS department uh, tab on the county website, this presentation will be posted for uh, anyone to go and look at each one of the projects a little bit more in detail. The 911 radio replacement uh, is currently 40% complete and will have a completion of March 2018. Airport FBO, uh, preliminary design is currently in progress. The ambulances are complete. Animal control renovations is complete. Fire station capital equipment is complete. Fire station 14 is in progress, will be complete next in September. Fire station 15 is complete. Fire station 16 is in progress, estimated completion February 2018. Henry County DOT construction equipment is complete. The jail renovations, pod A and B renovations are complete and the kitchen renovation is in progress. Countywide new interchange on I-75 is in progress. The feasibility study has been completed. Countywide uh, 30 police patrol vehicles is complete. Probate court building improvement is in progress. Sewer to the airport, phase one is complete, which gets the sewer to the airport. Phase two is in progress. Countywide technical building is in progress. Sewer to Fairview, phase one is complete. Phase two is in progress. The summary of the countywide, 16 of the 17 countywide projects are in progress or complete. District 1, uh, fire station number 2 is complete. Uh, kitchen Locust Grove, uh, preliminary design is in progress. Tanger Ball Fields is complete. District 1, major transportation, uh, McDonough Parkway. Uh, we're acquiring right away and phase one, which is gonna go through the back of this uh, building. We're looking at putting it out for bid by the end of the year. It's our state route 81 widening. Uh, that's a GDOT project in combination with GDOT. Design is in progress. Intersection improvements, Locust Road, Jackson Street, that was completed by GDOT. South Bethany at Old Jackson, uh, currently we're acquiring Rodway on that project. 81 at Mount Bethel and Wynn, that project is completed. Harris Drive is completed as well. 
Leicester Mill Road is under construction. Uh, quite a bit of the grading and the GAB has been already completed. Dirt roads still, uh, Pixville Road, uh, we're on right of acquisition. Uh, we're about 20% on uh, right of acquisition on that project. Pixville Road, uh, the second phase of it is in design. Wimps Road is complete. Bridge improvements, all of the uh, bridge improvements in District 1 are complete. Uh, the list are King Mill over Tassaha, Locust Grove over Indian Creek, Jackson Lake over Mackey Creek, Old Jackson over Tassaha, and South Ola over Tassaha Creek. Also in District 1, um, these are the 13 projects completed last year. Um, the list for resurfacing and surface treatment for this year uh, will be added once uh, the bids are put, uh, put out, which is already currently out. Uh, all the districts resurfacing and surface, surface treatments are for districts one and three. Uh, bids opening on those are gonna be uh, August of 24th of this, this month. So uh, hopefully bring those uh, bid awards uh, first meeting in September. This is summary. Three of three capital projects are in process or complete. And Fifteen of the sixteen transportation projects are in progress or complete. We also have uh, Frog Road under District 1. It's under construction. Uh, as you can see, all the cl clearing has been completed. Uh, box culvert has been completed and backfill, and a lot of the GAB has been uh, placed currently. District 2. Avalon Park restroom, uh, it's, it's in progress. The design build request for proposals is now in progress. The senior center in uh, Hampton is complete. District two intersection improvements, uh, industrial parkway at Stair Route 20. Uh, GDOT is working on that project currently, uh, working on the design for a signal um, for that project, intersection. Jericho Road at uh, Blackout Road, uh, that project has been bid out. Uh, we're waiting on GDOT to give us a construction contract and also approval of the bids uh, so we can bring it to the board for approval for construction. Hopefully bring it in September. Mill Road at 81, um, that project right away acquisition uh, is complete. Uh, construction bids are due on the 24th of this month. Mount Carmel Chambers, uh, finally construction should be restarted again this week. Uh, we had a long hold on the project uh, due to some utility relocation. So hopefully, uh, my understanding they're all out of the way and uh, contractors should start again this week uh, on it. It won't take them long uh, now that finally all the utilities are uh, out of the way. And uh, since the mail, Hampton Locust Grove, uh, preliminary design is in progress. Amalie, uh, Amalie, we actually combined Amalie with Thoroughbred. Uh, right away should be completed this month and we're gonna put it out for bid at the end of the month. Uh, so with a bid opening date of uh, September. And then Farmer Drive is complete, Fields Drive is complete, Floyd, Jones, and Mount Olive, all of those are complete as well. Selfridge, uh, preliminary design in progress, as well as South Cleveland Church, and South Mount Carmel is also complete. Um, just talked about Thoroughbred a moment ago. Uh, bridge improvements, all of the bridge improvements um, in District 2 are complete as well. Uh, Black Hall over Rum Creek, Hampton over Indian, Hampton over Talawaga, Jonesboro over Walnut Creek, and all State Route 3 over North Fork Southern Railroad. And that's just a list of uh, all the resurfacing in District 2 from last year. 24 projects, uh, or 24 roads were completed. Two of two capital projects are in progress or complete in District 2, and 20 of the 23 transportation projects are in progress or complete. We also have a SPLOS 3 in District 2 that is ongoing. It's an intersection improvement. Um, it's all Highway 3 at Stay Route. 81. District 3 update. 
Heritage Park improvements are complete. Jason T. Harper Arena improvements. Uh, the design is complete. We're now in the process of phasing the construction so we can stay within the budget. North Ola Park is in progress. Uh, T-ball fields, uh, 115 space parking lot addition is complete. And we've, uh, last week we received the RFPs for the design build uh, for the additional ball fields. On major transportation, we got McDonough Parkway, State Route 42 to State Route 155. Uh, we're going to be starting right away acquisition this month. Uh, letters for right away staking should go out later this week. So once right away is completed, we'll put it out for bid. So hopefully by the end of the year, first of next, it all depends on how right away goes. Uh, Stay route 81 widening is also District 3. It's a combination of uh, combined project between District 1 and 3. It's a GDAP project and concept design is in progress. That's just a rendering of the future of McDonough Parkway. Intersection improvements, uh, Bethany Road at 81, that was completed. Uh, Campground Road at 155, all the right is being completed. Daily Meal at Jodico Road, that project's complete. East Lake at Stero 20 is complete. And Jodico Road at Oak Grove is complete. That's a picture of the roundabout about completed. Also, Lake Dow, Rogers, and Rosser roundabout is complete as well. And in improvements on 81 at Mount Bethel and Wynn is also complete. That's uh, Lake Dow. Dirt roads, uh, Butler Bridge, Candler Road, East Knight Road, all complete. As well as SQ, Turner Church. Uh, that one is uh, actually later today. Hopefully, the board will award it. And uh, we can start construction later, uh, end of the month. Turner Circle is complete. Bridge improvements, all the bridge improvements are in progress. Uh, daily meal over Walnut Creek, that's complete. Uh, we still got to do some punch list items on that. Ed. Elliott Road over Walnut Creek, uh, design is in progress, and right away acquisition will start by the end of the month. Jackson Lake over Mackey Creek, that project is complete. It was a shared district with a project with District 1. And Oak Grove over Walnut Creek is complete. Much wider bridge than we had before on, on Jackson Lake. Again, uh, on resurfacing, we completed 29 projects on District 3. That's just the list of them from last year. District 3 uh, status summary, three of three capital projects is in progress or complete, and 19 of the 22 transportation progress are in progress or complete. District 4, Bud Kelly Park is complete. Rock Quarry Riding Project, that's a uh, GDOT project with Henry County. Uh, concept design is in progress. Uh, we're waiting on GDOT for their approval so we can move into preliminary plans. Banks Road at Rock Quarry intersection is complete, as well as East Lake Road and State Route 20, which was a 50 50 with a shared project with District 3. Hemp Hill Road at State Route 138. Uh, Construction is in progress. Uh, we have some delays on utilities, but hopefully we can get back on, on track on that. And then mostly road at State Route 138. That was completed by GDA. On the dirt roads, we have uh, Elliott Road. Uh, right away is complete. Uh, construction bid will hopefully be later by the end of the month, 1st of September. Bridge improvements, uh, Hemp Hill over James Creek is complete, all Conyers over Big Cotton Indian Creek complete, and Selfridge over Little Cotton Indian Creek is uh, preliminary design in progress. District 4, uh, 20 rows were completed last year. One of the two, and District 4 summary, uh, one of two capital projects complete and 10 of the 11 
transportation progress are uh, in progress or complete. Uh, we also have some plus three, district four, district four, uh, three and four, major transportation, campground, road extension. Uh, as you can see, the bridge is uh, moving forward. Uh, this project just started back in April, this past April. So a lot of progress been going on. Uh, those caps have already been poured on those columns. So today, that, that picture was taken like a, two weeks ago. This already has changed. We already got caps. Beams for that section, we expect them by the 15th of, of this month. And that's the uh, aerial view of uh, campground. District 5 update. Village Park at North Henry is complete. Uh, we're right now in the process of a couple of minor punch list items, but basically the project is complete. Cochrane Park is complete. Uh, District 5, major transportation, Anvil Block Road widening, construction is in progress. West Village Parkway, final design is in progress. Um, as you can see, we started clearing and, and grading. Uh, that picture, if you go by there now, it's already got GAB on it. So they're moving along pretty good. And that's just a uh, West Village uh, concept. Intersection improvements, uh, East Atlanta, Thur Thurman at Flat Rock, uh, preliminary design in progress. And then uh, bridge improvements, uh, both projects have been completed, all Conyers over Big Cotton Indian Creek and Stagecoach over Big Cotton Indian Creek. And uh, six, pro six projects were completed from last year's uh, resurfacing list. In summary of District 5, two or two capital projects are complete and five of the nine transportation projects are in progress or complete. That's just a summary of all the projects. And that concludes our presentation. If anybody has any questions. Okay, thank you for your presentation. You. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay, Commissioner Clemens. Uh, Rocky, you said that the bridge over Black Hall was complete. That it's not complete. I'm sorry. Okay. I, that's correct. Uh, we're actually acquiring right away on that. I apologize for that. Yes. Uh, okay. we're, I didn't, see right the, I didn't see the roundabout um, for Jodico. Um, Jodico. Well, we, Jodico. Roundabout. We, Jodico or, uh, oh, Jodico Black Hole. Black Hole. Um, right, because we haven't, we haven't, we haven't started, so I, I didn't put no pictures on it. I only put, well, I can put a picture next time of, okay, uh, but of the you roundabout. Did have the, uh, you had, we had the information. Okay. Yeah, we had the information. Uh, okay. That's Jodica Black Hole, the intersection right. improvement. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we're actually waiting on GDOT to give us a contract because they're going to pay 80% of the construction costs. So they have to give us a construction contract that the board has to accept. And then we also have to get uh, the board to approve that low bid as well. So as soon as I get the contract from GDOT, I should be able to bring it to the board, both things, bring the contract for GDOT and also the award. Okay. Um, I'll send you an email, but I want to get an update on both of those projects because um, okay. those projects are old and trying to get them moving. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Thank you. Other questions? Commissioner Barn? Uh, Rocky, Ron, I, I appreciate you uh, bringing this presentation to us today and giving us this update. I'd like to see more of these updates in the future like on a quarterly basis or so, but we will. Um, Elliott Bridge, uh, that's been on the radar for quite a while now, and I think we're putting, is it 300000 That's correct. for the right-of-way? For right -of -way. And then we're getting the rest of the money from the state. So do that's you right. have a, any kind of time frame when the state's going to uh, issue that, that move? They haven't. Uh, we have to acquire all the right-of-way, and then the, the money that the GDOT has is actually from the feds. So it, it all depends on where that money is allocated. Um, if I remember well, I think it was 2019 when they said that it was going to be available. But okay. I can double check uh, yeah. and, and give double that information check, no, for I, the next month. I had 2018 on my 2018? Okay. something. I don't know. But, mm -hmm. And what was the number that the feds were putting in it? Well, well, the feds are going to take care of all the construction. So Henry County, SPLOS, the only responsibility is to acquire the right away. 
right. and they're going to actually bid it out, award it, and everything through through GDOT. So we don't have to to do anything. It's the same thing is going to be with uh, the bridge on Black Hall. We're just acquiring right away, and then GDOT will do the construction and, and everything. Well, uh, the only other comment, uh, there was a lot of people that was skeptical about these roundabouts, but I've had a lot of people come back since that time and uh, really appreciate it. They really like the way those things work. And thank you all. Thank you, sir. Other questions? Commissioner Wilson. On Station 14, did you say it was going to open up in September? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Last I heard was August, so we moved it up to September. That's correct, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Thank you. Okay, other questions or comments from the board? Commissioner Holmes, yes. Can you give me an update on the meeting you guys had at uh, Village Park yesterday? Yes, sir. Uh, the sod is got the, around the playground. The sod will be installed, if not the end of this week, the first part of next week, and the regrading in that area. Also, the area that's in the Grand Lawn, the low spot. That'll be taken care of this week. Um, then the drainage on the football fields? And the drainage on the football fields will be next week. Okay. Now, I saw some people out there working on the um, the um, detention pond. Yes, um, Can you update us on what's going on there? Right now, they're draining the pond, Commissioner. Uh, there was an error in the original survey that was done. Uh, the contractor went and did a survey, uh, which uh, pointed out the error, hired a, a third party independent to go out and to verify the the volume for the pond and that that work will be complete this week okay thank you all right other questions or comments from the board okay thank you we'll now move into our consent agenda items and the um, following items will be considered on the consent agenda and right now we have a public safety of the Henry County um, Police Department for a resolution accepting the Walmart community granting the amount of $1,500 for the, again, the Police Department COPS unit. Also under building and plan review, there is a resolution approving a request for the creation of a new street light district for Castlebrook subdivision on South Ola Road in District 1. And then under transit, there is a resolution to accept an award fund for the Henry County FY 2014 Federal Transit Administration Section 5339 Bus and Bus Facilities Grant. Under DOT, there's a resolution authorizing the chair to sign a Georgia Department of Transportation Local Maintenance and Improvement Grant application for fiscal year 2018. Um, are there any items on the consent agenda that any commissioner wishes to remove? If not, now call for a motion. So moved. We have a motion to approve. Is a second? Got a second. Any discussions or comments? Yeah. Oh. But um, if we look at the uh, funding that we're receiving from uh, GDOT, Dale Mick funding, that's about uh, $430,000 that's split between the board for resurfacing. And that's not enough money to, to, to fill potholes or resurface any type of or get anything done in any community uh, around the county. So, I mean, it just stresses the need that there is more funding needed in order to, um, to serve our citizens as well as um, um, keep, their, uh, keep our road infrastructure up to date. Okay, so duly noted for the application. Is that what you're doing? You want to step, remove this from the agenda, consent agenda no, or the application? You just want to make a note. Did we make a motion already? or? Um, we can move it to, uh, um, I'll ask our county attorney what's the proper procedure for what we're asking to do. I, I, I'm not sure what, if Mr. Holmes is just making a just make comment a about it, yeah. you can leave it on executive session or leave, yeah, it, on leave it on consent agenda. If he wants to pull it off and vote on it separately, then. Yeah, if no. you want to make a motion on something, then it needs no, to be well, make No, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, yeah. okay, so we have a second. Okay, any other comments or discussion items? Okay, all in favor of um, the, approving the consent agenda? Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, well this ends the consent agenda. We'll now move into item 10 from the um, Henry County um, Fire Department and I understand we've got Captain Sam Polk here to present a resolution approving the updated agreement with Piedmont Henry Hospital to provide medical supplies and pharmaceuticals to the Henry County Fire Department. Good morning, Chair and Commissioner. Good morning. 
Um, what we have before you is a update to our long-standing agreement with the hospital uh, from the time it was Henry Medical to Piedmont Henry for the procurement of uh, medical supplies and pharmaceuticals. Um, basically, the contract just had some updated wording and needed to be renewed. Okay. Um, any specifics on the wording uh, that you... They were reviewed by the uh, county attorney, mainly that dealt with um, wording for Medicare and Medicaid requirements in uh, securing supplies and the purchasing of those supplies, as well as um, dealing with uh, our ability to obtain pharmaceuticals if we need from another location. Okay, thank you. All right, um, are there any questions or comments from the board regarding this presentation? Okay. Um, the floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. And we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any other comments, questions, or discussions? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you, Captain. All right, we're now moving to our purchasing item um, by Mr. Rock Gray regarding a resolution approving the bid award for construction of Turner Church Road in District 3. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Turner Church Road is an approved splossed for District 3 project. Seven bids were received for this project, and the recommendation is to award this to the low bid of McElroy Incorporated at $987,278. Okay. Are there any questions or comments regarding this re resolution? Okay. Commissioner Barn. Uh, Rod, uh, what is, once we approve this today, if we approve it, uh, what kind of completion date are we looking at? I'm going to defer to Rocky on that question. Okay. Commissioner, we, we have uh, 300 days uh, for completion of the project. And uh, once it's, it's awarded, it probably takes about two weeks for contracted to provide information about bids and bonds in bonds and uh, insurance to the purchasing department and uh, we probably give notice to proceed once purchase and receive that information so we're probably looking about hopefully by the end of the, this month we should be able to give notice to proceed now the city of mcdonough know has a water line on the existing turner church are they going to relocate that no sir uh, we actually tie in at the subdiv you know, there's, a, there's two subdivisions. We're going to tie in right there before the, after the subdivision ends. That road ends right there after the subdivision, so we're going to tie in there. So there's going to be no relocation on the existing uh, paved road. Now, there's going to be some work done on the McDonald Parkway extension on Turner Church. That will be relocated. But it's, that's on the, at, the other, at the entrance okay. of, uh, on 155 uh, side. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, um, the floor is now open for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any other questions or comments or concerns? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. We're now moving to our GDOT public hearing um, regarding the resolution um, to abandon and declare surplus a portion of Harris Drive right of way for the Henry County Department of Transportation. Good morning, Mr. Stroud. Good morning, Chair Wood and Commissioners. When GDOT realigned Harris Drive where it intersects with State Route 42, the roadway was shifted to the south to provide an improved intersection angle with State Route 42. As part of the project, Henry County Sploss had right-of-way acquisition responsibilities. Due to the relocation of the roadway, there is some existing right-of-way north of the current Harris Drive roadway that is available for abandonment. Also, as part of the right-of-way acquisition process, the purchase agreement for acquisition of additional State Route 42 right-of-way which was approximately 7,250 square feet from the Bund property, included a stipulation of deeding property of a slightly less land area, approximately 7,224 square feet, to the Bunds within the Harris Drive right-of-way location along the frontage. In order to complete the transaction, the Harris Drive right-of-way property in question is needed to be abandoned, declared surplus, and in a subsequent board action authorized for completing the transaction of deeding the property. There is sufficient right-of-way available, uh, remaining at 42 subsequent to this abandonment uh, for the portion in question, and staff does recommend moving forward with this abandonment. 
Okay, thank you for this presentation. Um, this is a public hearing, so are there any persons wishing to be heard in opposition of this request? And you will have a total of 10 minutes for all that want to speak in opposition. And likewise, if there is anyone that wants to speak in favor, that group will also have a total of 10 minutes to speak in favor. So anyone wishing to speak in opposition, will you please come forward now? Calling again, anyone wishing to speak in opposition, please come forward now. Anyone wishing to speak in favor, would you please come forward now? Calling again, anyone wishing to speak in favor, please come forward now. Well, thank you. Well, this um, ends our public hearing aspect of it, and now we'll open the floor for any questions or comments from the Board of Directors. Any questions or comments? If none, the floor is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. Any other questions or comments or concerns? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. All right, we'll now move into our second uh, resolution, authorizing the deeding of the certain real property um, for the Henry County Department of Transportation um, for the surplus portion of Henry of Harris Drive right away. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair Wood and Commissioners. The Board of Commissioners just heard the abandonment and declaration of surplus property, a portion of Harris Drive right away uh, prior to this agenda item uh, for the parcel shown on Exhibit A as containing 7,224 square feet. Uh, if this abandonment was approved as it was, this request is to authorize the county to deed and the declared surplus property shown in Exhibit A per OCG uh, A section 32-7-3 and 32-7-4. The surplus property in question available to be deeded is 7,200 and 24 square feet or 0.166 acres and is shown on the attached plat marked as Exhibit A. And again, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Stroud. Any questions or comments for Mr. Stroud? Hearing none, the floor is now open for a motion. Chair, I move to approve. We have a motion. There's a second. Any other discussion items? We now, um, all in favor? Any opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll now move into our planning and zoning item um, regarding a public hearing regarding ULDC AM 1704, which is an ordinance by Henry County, Georgia, to amend Table 2.03.03, non-residential land uses in base zoning districts specific to finance and insurance offices in accordance with Sections 12.02 and 12.03 of the Henry County Unified Land Development Code. So good morning, Mr. Rudisell. Good morning, Chair, Commissioners. The item before you today is a request to amend the Unified Land Development Code, which currently prohibits finance and insurance offices in the M1 and M2 industrial zoning districts. This prohibition is inconsistent with the treatment of other offices, including real estate and general business offices, which are currently permitted in the M1 and M2 industrial zoning districts. This proposed amendment would allow the finance and insurance offices to be permitted in the M1 and M2 industrial zoning districts, and I'd be pleased to answer any questions. All right, well, you've heard the presentation. Are there, uh, this is a public hearing. So at this time, we are allowing the public, anyone wishing to speak in opposition, individuals will be given a total of 10 minutes to, as a group, and anyone wishing to speak in favor will also be granted a, a 10 minutes as a group. Um, at this time, we'll call for anyone wishing to speak in opposition. Calling again, anyone wishing to speak in opposition. We now call for anyone wishing to speak in favor. Again, anyone wishing to speak in favor, please come forward. Would you please state your name and address, yeah. please? Carl Swenson, Stockbridge. I am in favor of this. Um, this is an obvious. I don't know how it got to the point where you separated the uh, uh, the business or the finance communities or the insurance communities from these uh, M1 zoning, but I think it's a good thing, and I think you should pass that. All right, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, well, thank you. This now concludes our public hearing um, regarding this um, ordinance. Um, we now will open the um, floor for any questions or comments by the board. 
Commissioner Holmes. Can you tell me, I, I missed it, what other companies are allowed um, in uh, the M1 zoning? Yes, sir. If, if you'll take a look at the exhibit that, that's in your exhibit packet as well as displayed on the overhead, mm -hmm. you'll notice that we have business, professional services, we've got technical services, we've got government, public buildings, real estate sales, medical, all of these are permitted in the M1 and M2 zoning districts as indicated by the capital letter P. For, for whatever reason, and I'm not familiar with the reason, finance and insurance have to date not been allowed in the M1 and M2, and this ordinance would, would rectify that. I mean, wouldn't, that wouldn't that go under the category business or professional services? Uh, it why would, do, it would, and so we could just eliminate the extraneous rows within this chart. That is an option, but it just seemed easier just to include the, the letter P's under the current setup. All right, other questions or comments from the board? Okay, the floor is now open for a motion. I make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any other questions or comments or discussions? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll now move into our county manage, uh, manager section regarding the first item, which is a resolution pertaining to Teeth's Bloss, and we welcome up our county manager, Sherry Hobson Matthews. Good morning, Chair and board members. Good morning. You all should have at your um, area a resolution pertaining to the board authorizing a call for a T-SPLOS vote for the November 2017 general election. Um, if you all will recall last month, myself and the county attorney did present to you all um, a T-SPLOS presentation in terms of some proposed revenues that we would expect if the county were to put this on a ballot and the voters did vote to support a T-SPLOS. Just for history, I wanted to make you all aware and for those that are here this morning aware of um, how we're able to do this. During the 2016 legislative session, the Georgia legislators um, passed Senate Bill 369 and it authorized counties to consider a special purpose local option sales tax, and for short, that is the T-SPLOS. And whereas when we had residents in Henry County, there was a survey conducted by the Atlanta Regional Commission, and the survey was entitled Metro Atlanta Speaks. Um, as a result of the survey, many residents within the county or a majority of the residents in the county identified transportation as the single most important issue facing the Metro um, Atlanta region. Um, again, we did have a comprehensive transportation plan that was adopted in 2007, and then an update was made to that plan in 2016. And as a result of that plan, there were a number of critical transportation projects identified. With those projects that were identified came a bill of about $3 billion worth of investment. Um, based on our 25-year planning horizon, we're going to be about $2 billion short. So there is a resolution for um, consideration this morning for the board to consider um, authorizing a TSPLOS vote for the November 2017 general election. If you'll notice in the resolution, it does state a 1% TSPLOS tax would have a projected average total annual collection of $33,500,000 per year. And again, that's at a 0.75% TSPLOS tax where the county would be $25,125,000. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Are there comments or questions from the board? Um, okay, um, Commissioner Clemens. Yeah. Sherry, in the um, $2 billion shortfall, did you include, I know that, I, I, did Wade leave? Because I had a question about resurfacing. So I think that we're supposed to be resurfacing about 75 miles. I think um, that's what we discussed of roads per year. And I think we're only doing like 11 miles. And I know for me, I get a lot of calls about communities that need their roads resurfacing. And I think that this, uh, these funds would be able to be used for that, but I don't know if you included that shortfall that we have in resurfacing roads in this $2 billion. Well, the $2 billion only identified the critical transportation projects, so it did look at new roadways, it looked at extensions, it looked at sidewalks, um, but this funding, if voted on, could certainly go towards um, repaving. Or so that, so yes. that $2 billion shortfall is really $2 billion plus? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Yeah. Commissioner Holmes. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, 
again, I you know I think it would be irresponsible if we don't let allow the citizens to design, decide um, the way their county wants you know the way they want their county to look in the future. Um, as Commissioner Clemens just said, I mean there is a desperate need for uh, subdivisions to be repaved. Uh, we all know that our road infrastructure continues to be terrible. Um, we have many dirt roads. Um, even in District 5, there are still dirt roads that need to be um, uh, paved. And there's a, de a great demand for sidewalks uh, in the county. Um, this won't be something that would be decided by the Board of Commissioners. However, um, I think that um, we should allow um, it to be up. Uh, on a referendum uh, this November is for the county to decide. Um, but Sherry didn't mention that most, you know, you did mention that um, um, transportation, people in this county, I think transportation is our number one issue. And um, if that's the case, then it's very important that um, uh, we vote to uh, approve this so citizens can go to the polls and vote yay or nay. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the board? Commissioner Prince. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sherry, for bringing this. Um, Sherry, I have some questions real quick. Um, can you provide me a synopsis by district of the priorities per commissioner and percentages of what percent they want to use this money in their district? And I'm going to break that down into categories. Um, I'd like to know which roads and which districts are priorities. I'd like to know the widening of the roads, if there, which GDOT roads or county roads we're going to do, which roads we're going to resurface, um, which roads are going to be paved of dirt roads, um, are we going to be funding public transportation, which district and how much percentages are we going to be using for multi-use paths, what percentage in what district is going to be used for sidewalks, what percentage in what district are we going to be um, used for new roads. So if you could provide each district with a synopsis of each one of these questions, I'd really appreciate that. Okay. I will certainly, I've taken notes, I certainly will have to bring that back to the board. Um, at this point, there is no project list that has been determined. Um, again, I think it's critical that we look at our approved comprehensive transportation plan as a framework for determining what those projects are, but staff will have to meet individually with each commissioner to determine what those priorities are in order for us to determine a project list. So. At this point, staff hasn't met with any commissioner to get their priorities and get the percentages and everything else. No, sir. I, I feel a little bit like I'm, I'm going to be voting blind. And I'm not making a statement whether I do a, agree or disagree with the T-splash. I am making a statement that this just seems a little lazy. And, and I'm going to relate this to someone who wants a bachelor's degree, but they don't want to go to class. They just want to show up at graduation. And I feel we're here at graduation and nobody's done any legwork yet. And I don't know what I'm voting on. And, and you know, we can't agree on how to spend $2 million for a police station in the 5th District. And here we're talking about $200 million. I do want the citizens to know, and I, I'm going to say me and the other commissioners as well, but I, I can't say them. I've been working closely with the state over the last couple of years, and we're getting $300 million from the state from the House Bill 170. Um, it's quite a bit of money. You know, I just need to you know, make the citizens aware that there is some money movement and there, there is some GDOT is helping us on some things. But right now, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm voting blind because I, I do not know where the priorities are for the districts. I personally haven't had a five-minute conversation with any commissioner about where their priorities are, where they're going to put their money. It, it may be a great idea, and I, and I cannot argue the fact that transportation is one of the worst things in this county can't get around, the roads are starting to decay, I know this. But for me to make a vote, my other commissioners know this, I have to have all the information. I, n I need to know where we're going to the end. And right now, I don't, I don't know where we're going. And it just gets, makes me feel uncomfortable to make a vote when I don't know where we're spending the money. I understand. And that question or comments from the board? Commissioner Barron. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree with you, Mr. Prince. Um, it's kind of like we're putting the cart before the horse. We're not ready to even consider voting on t spots at this time, so I, I would have to not be in favor of that. All right, Commissioner Holmes. We've been discussing this for about a year now, and we have a baseline that goes all the way back to SPLOS 1. 
And it's asinine for any commissioner that's sitting up here to not know what roads and which communities need attention in their district. And if you don't know what's going on in your particular district, there's no reason for you to be up on this board because that means you're not serving, serving your community. So we have a number of roads that we know that either need to be widened, that need to be resurfaced. We have people in our, in our, in our districts that are demanding uh, walking paths in their community. I know people reach out to me every day, and I'm assuming if you're a commissioner in Henry County, you have people reaching out to you. So for any commissioner to say that they don't have an idea of what needs to be done in a district, then the voters need to be looking for a replacement for that district. You need somebody in your community that knows what the heck is going on. So I don't understand that line of communication, but I'm gonna say, one thing I'm gonna say is that it is irresponsible for a representative of Henry County to sit up here and not to let, and not to let, not let the citizens decide what they want for their communities. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a comment as well. Um, um, we do have a significant issue here with our transportation here in Henry County. Nobody is arguing that. The second thing is, is that we just have heard from a lot of our citizens about taxes. And for us to be responsible, um, I do believe that we need to have, yes, there was a comprehensive transportation improvement program, a plan that was developed, priorities were not developed. I believe that our citizens and our cities need to be part of at least identifying the priorities. I also believe that if there is a T-SPLOS vote, and I will tell you I am in support of voters expressing their, um, their opinions about everything. I don't want, if we do position a T-SPLOS, I don't want it to fail because we already know we've got a funding gap. And the only way that you can get the support that is gonna be needed is that individuals, the community understands the uh, priorities, they are supporting the priorities, and more importantly, I think even after there is a vote for T-SPLOS and if it passes like it has in SPLOS and others, that there needs to be another level of accountability to make sure that the projects that were identified the money that the voters have supported will carry through. So at this time, I believe that uh, preparing for a T-SPLOS after we've had a chance to involve uh, more of our communities, um, citizens and cities to identify the priorities and present that maybe at a later time next year once we can come back, get their feedback, and then allow them to do what they want to do to express and educate other voters so that again, everybody is on the same page and there is a level of transparency and it's not just the board that's identified find the priorities. Commissioner Clevens. Yes, and I would just like to agree with that, Chair. I would like, Chair, if we don't vote on this today and you have to bring this information back to us, um, please take a look at the comprehensive transportation plan and the things that have already been identified. I think it's very simple. We don't have to create what needs to happen. It was created already. Uh, we just need to put them and list them in a priority, um, a list of priority. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that for me, um, I want to be very clear that this is not a uh, T-SPLOS to bring uh, public transportation uh, to our community. Um, and I would like it to be very clear in the resolution that this is not for uh, bringing public transportation, but simply for road widening projects and um, parks and trails or whatever we can use it for besides um, the transit coming, public transportation. Okay, and I'd like to make a comment if, in regards to your comment. Um, the Comprehensive Transportation Improvement Pro Plan does make a statement yeah. about fixed routes. Now, I do agree okay. that we need to um, review our fixed routes um, and to de definitely look for commuter options um, that would allow us to um, begin looking at more fixed routes, and that is what the Comprehensive Transportation Improvement Plan again. But again, these are the things that we need to talk about as priorities that the citizens need to have input into. So, um, any other comment, Commissioner Wilson? Yes, I, I think we need to look forward to a uh, SPLOS 5 that we can control. We, we have transportation in our SPLOS program, and we're, in that way we can keep our capital improvements as well. So, if, if we want to put 10% to capital, 9% to transportation, but if we put this on the ballot, we may jeopardize that SPLOS 5 as well, and I don't see us having both of them in, in effect at the same time. Other questions or comments? All right, we've heard the presentation. Um, we've heard the um, questions and comments. Um, the floor is now open for a motion. I want to make a motion to approve 
However, I would like to exclude um, transit and uh, make a motion to approve a T splice based on road infrastructure improvement, dirt road uh, resurfacing, uh, subdivision resurfacing, as well as um, a walking paths throughout the, um, the county, um, depending on the uh, district commissioner. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. There is a second. Any further comments or questions by the board? All in favor of that motion, raise any, uh, any opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will now move um, item 14B um, regarding the resolution approving the ERP contract with Tyler Solutions um, was removed from the agenda, but we'll now move into the Item 14C, which is a resolution approving priority one capital project list by our assistant deputy county manager, um, Brad Johnson. Good morning, Chairwood Commissioners. Good morning. Thanks for having us again up here. This is uh, phase two. Last week we approved the millage uh, along with our FY18 budget a few months ago, or last month. This is the next step of actually moving out of fund balance the capital phase one rolling stock fleet vehicles, uh, moving them funds from the fund balance over to capital asset general fund um, total price for the funding for that project number one is five million three hundred twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars and i'm asking today to get that approval to to move that fund transfer that funds over all right you've heard the presentation regarding this request um are there any um questions or comments from the board hearing none the floor is now open for a motion Motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any other discussion or comments or concerns? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. We're now moving to our public comment section, um, which will allow citizens to voice any county related concerns or opinions that are not listed on the agenda during this portion of the meeting. And we just ask all persons wishing to speak for public comments that they sign in with the county clerk prior to the meeting. And you must complete the public comment speaker form or you will not be recognized. Each individual will be given five minutes to address the board for five minutes. And again, we just ask that you please be respectful in your comments. So um, we'll look over to our county clerk. How many do we have? We have six, but two of them signed up for the ward um, road that was removed at the beginning. So I believe they have left. Um, I'll call their names just in case. Okay. Larry Morey, Bill Tony, David and Charlotte Parks, Thank you. Melvin Rainey, Carl Swenson, and Keith Garland. Okay. Thank you. All right, good morning. If you will state your name and address, please. <clears throat> Larry Murray, Ethics in Government. <clears throat> June, you said a couple of meetings ago that we hadn't approved nothing for our trucks. Well, here's a drawing that y'all have approved. And uh, this is on Rock Quarry in Eagles Landing. And uh, this has been approved by your permit department. And they said that you did know about it. Let me say something about it. trucks, semis take seven car spaces. You fix to start construction on Rock Quarry, and now you're introducing all these semi trucks on Rock Quarry. You know, we got two massive truck terminals down at south end of the county, and yet we're sticking it off up here in a place that we fix to have all kind of construction. I wonder if y'all remember Eagles Landing a few years ago. You know, we had a massive problem there with building Eagles Landing, and then we started building a bridge. And then Eagles Landing basically could quit growing because of that, especially the quality of what was growing. It just surprises me that y'all are doing this kind of stuff. And then I get on 81 yesterday over at Lovejoy, two-lane road, there at the intersection of 81 and 3, another two-lane road, twisting and turning, we have approved another place to park semis. It just amazes me that we take these semis and put them off in these neighborhoods and expect people to go to work and pay taxes and get the skids to school with no forethought about what we're doing to the traffic patterns. Rock Quarry, we know, is a major alternate when 75 is blocked. 
I didn't want to talk about this today, but it just blows my mind that we keep doing things like we're doing with these truck stops. And we all know this tea splash is going to eventually lead to doing work for semis. So you keep tying up traffic, and it's just going to get worse and worse to where you can't, you can't grow the county at all. And let me I, I ain't going to bring up the, the first thing I was going to bring up, education. I'll wait till next week. Shame on y'all for making people that want to try to help the county a lot and make solutions to have to wait to the end of the, the bus ride every meeting, and yet y'all can talk for 30 minutes about libraries. My school is give 3D uh, robotics things to the libraries, but and that's good. But they can speak for 30 minutes, but we can't speak for five. Shame on y'all. And then closing, I'm going to say this. Shame on a commissioner that will chastise the other commissioners. When that boondoggle of a park that's located in his district that he's been in charge of has been the most wasteful abuse of taxpayers' money in the history of Henry County. Shame on you, Bruce. You ought to you ought to make a you ought to make a, you ought to make knowledgeable what what's went on in that park before you criticize these other ones. Thank that you, uh, Mr. Truth. Commissioner. We will not interrupt. We will not Shame interrupt, Mr. Co uh, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, our next individual. Bill Tony, McDonough, Georgia. Good morning. Okay. I would applaud every citizen that takes that to heart, that they come out and they speak. And I have to agree that moving, moving people that come up here every time trying to get something done in this county, moving them to the back of the meeting is not right. And if I'm not mistaken, when y'all voted to do that, Every one of you was unanimous with it. All right, and the thing of transparency, Ms. Wood, uh, has a few, th a couple of things I'd like to. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but that's your uh, financial on your campaign. You brought in a hundred and. Hundred and nine thousand dollars. You are one machine when it on a campaign. Okay. What concerns me though is that um, you've had some um, zonings come up, and Mr. Welch. If y'all could zoom in on that one real close, I'd appreciate it. Andy Welch put a good bit of money into your campaign, and you just you refrain from voting, but you don't give the reason for it. Now, I think that you owe it to the citizens any time a zoning comes up that you give them the reason that you're not voting. So, I mean, that's I, to me that's the transparent thing to do. You also. For what it's worth, Rick Jeffries, when he was uh, on the Water Authority, he kind of helped you out a good bit, too. And we all know about the conflicts of interest that we discussed about that one. All right, Mr. Wilson, last week I gave you a call. You didn't return my call, but I wanted to talk to you about cotton fields, golf course. I met with... Um, a real estate guy to look at all the properties over there. We looked at every every building on that property with very little maintenance work. We could turn that sixty-six thousand dollar loss into a hundred forty thousand dollar gain. But you won't even take the time out to talk to me on that one. I don't know if I've made you mad or whatever, but hope not. 
When you were running, you returned my call. All right. The, as far as the T splice goes and the shortfalls and all, Henry County Water Authority, two mils of tax. Now, we need to start procedures on going ahead and getting that money back. They are doing nothing but wasting money as far as I'm concerned. That one kind of blew my mind. Personnel, 36% of their capital is personnel. The salaries over there are crazy. In government, you give them money, they spend it. What I'd like to ask is, you know, when you got salaries, like this, where does it stop? People would be just about crazy to vote for a teach blast, you know, and for y'all to promote it, it's just crazy. It's not, it's not anything right. 5% of the tax dollars go to the Water Authority. I don't know how many people know that, but it's just, it's just ludicrous. Anybody wants to read anything about the Water Authority, House Bill 522, Dale Rutledge brought that on the floor. It passed through the House and Senate. Anybody pertaining to the Water Authority needs to read that bill. It gave them full power to do whatever they wanted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Charlotte Parks and Melvin Rainey. I believe they left. Okay, Next is here, Carl Swinson. Okay, thank you. If you're here, would you please come forward? Thank you. Good afternoon. Carl Swinson, Stockbridge. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, I want to thank Blake, Gary, and Johnny for um, standing in the breach. And I, I couldn't see how you voted on, on that tease boss thing. But uh, <clears throat> look, bottom line is the reason that uh, you are promoting this, Mr. Holmes, by and large, seems to be that sidewalk that you want from uh, the park up to DeKalb County. And DeKalb County comes to mind because I noticed that you've made another appointment with a friend of yours from, from DeKalb, John, John Pearson. What, what's the fascination with bringing all these people in from DeKalb County? I, I don't get it, I really don't. Um, but on the, on the positive side, I, I wanna say that I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that Mr. Burkhalter, and I, I guess you're involved with this too, are, are taking seriously the, uh, the problems that they've got with the uh, water runoff on, the, uh, on, on that park. So it's, it's good to hear that, and I'm sure that the people who live next door are going to be really happy to hear that something is being done. I hope that will be enough. We, we will find out whenever we get the next really big rain after the work is done. But I hear we're going to have to put out more money for... Uh, um, a independent uh, survey of the of the land so once again we keep throwing money into it uh, I do hate that um, getting getting back to the teach boss you really before you ever consider this again you really should uh, have some town halls around around the county and and let the people voice their concerns on this because we are pretty much uh, we're taxed enough already and kind of tired of that stuff um, yeah you got a little bit of an increase at last time but look if you need more money the, the money's out there uh, mr. Tony put out uh, uh, <laughs> some things that you need to consider that the board seems to continue to ignore I, I, I really don't know why but there's two mills that we're dealing with that have been established back in the 60s that are not needed now they're just not needed, folks, and that money could be turned around into the uh, into the county coffers uh, for the good of the infrastructure. That's what it's all about. So I'm hoping that uh, as we as we push forward, that you'll keep an eye towards the 
uh, towards the people first and not the bureaucracy that continues to, to grow here. And Bruce, uh, you, when you say you speak for the people, you don't speak for all the people because uh, I live in your district. You don't speak for me. You don't. Uh, I really don't have a whole bunch else to say, but I, again, I just want to thank the three of you for, uh, for, for holding the line there. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, and again, yeah. if you state your name and address. My name is uh, Keith Garland, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, I was wanting to talk about Nash Farms, Battlefield Park. I'm with the 30th Georgia Company, been a member for 24 years. I was at Nash Farms in the beginning, never played in that sandbox, so they say. There was never a free ride. We worked countless days working our tails off, volunteering for the new county battlefield park. Anything the park needed, we the 30th tried our best to comply. The park gave us one free weekend a year for all we do for the park to have our winter camp. But then we always cleaned the park better than when we found it. Far as reenactment goes, we never paid a flat daily rental fee. We always gave a percentage cut of what was made. The county and parson rate was always happy with that arrangement. The 30th gave them free, uh, gave them free time, labor, money to help get the park started. No one from the county paid me a penny for all what we did, just to thank you, and I was happy with that. The only other groups I seen working out there when we were there were county prisoners from time to time, other county employees, and other county employees making minor repairs to buildings. The only locals I seen volunteering was reenactors. The county was getting free volunteers with Parks and Rec, having a small budget. I think the county was getting a bargain. The commissioner picked a bad time to anger the volunteers and do her power play. I don't blame the volunteers for leaving. The Battlefield Park was international, nationally known. The word has been spread and there's nothing to visit now. No reason for none county residents to visit. History is gone. Keep it a battlefield park. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, that con concludes our public comment portion. We will now move into item 16 regarding the approval of minutes for the July 18th regular Board of Commissioners meeting. I can now call for a motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Have a second. Any other discussions? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. We're now moving to item 17 regarding any chair and commissioner comments. Are there any comments um, from the board? Hearing none, we'll now move into item 18 regarding county manager comments. I have no comments, Chair. Thank you. We're now moving to item 19 regarding upcoming meetings and events. On August 8th at 9 o'clock, there was a joint call meeting with the Henry County Water Authority to be held at the Tulsa Hall Water Treatment Facility. On August 15th at 6.30 p.m. is our regular Board of Commissioners meeting. And on September 6th at 9 o'clock a.m. is a regular Board of Commissioners meeting. And please note that the regular scheduled Board of Commissioners meeting was um, on Tuesday, September the 5th, but we've rescheduled to Wednesday, September the 6th due to the holiday weekend. We now will um, have a motion to adjourn into executive session to discuss personnel matters. We have a motion. Second. Have a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? All right, we will now adjourn to executive session. <laughs>